Hey guys, Red X Rain here with another episode of Let's Play Gex Enter the Gecko for the PlayStation 1. So we only have uh, one uh, level to finish up in this little, um, well it doesn't look very green over here, but it's like the green, no, the red gate area, I think. Um, this area, <laughs> and that's another Toon TV themed level, fine tuning, so let's go check this one out. Uh, I think this is my favorite level in, uh, in this area. It's, uh, we haven't seen a tune themed level since the very beginning. Um, I like them. Oh no, I'm too young to have a second childhood. Hmm. Um, I don't know, Gex, you're like, let's see, when did this game come out? 96? Well, f now, Gex is probably about, uh, you know, judging by the first Gex game, Gex is probably about 20 years old now. So, I mean, I guess... I guess that sounds about right. Um, but yes, anyway, uh, there are a lot of collectibles to be gotten in this level, so the uh, reward remote is none too tricky to get a hold of here, uh, especially if you take advantage of all the enemies, um, especially these uh, these little robot piranha guys. I thought there was one more in here. No? Hmm. Well, there's a lot of them in this level, so we'll definitely be getting the uh, reward remote uh, on this first playthrough and or this first uh, objective and if I can remember where the hidden remote is oh no that'll be next time um, so we have a slightly new uh, oh geez slightly new uh, level uh, level specific uh, mechanic here not this we've seen this before these hard hat areas but this one is particularly difficult because if you remember in the first video they give you like a top-down camera view so you can see when stuff is coming but not here I don't know if it has something to do with the camera or if it has something to do with they're just trying to make the game harder at this point for you I'm not too sure um, uh, let's see eventually we want to go over there but that's that's much later this part can get a little bit glitchy the camera can mess with you but just keep jumping and uh, tail swiping and you'll be uh, okay oh and I missed a carrot that's that's all right there's lots to get here like hidden in these bushes uh, let's see if I can get this bee oh my gosh I am just I'm just taking all the hits today um, <laughs> and uh, I might take a hit here um, let's see gotta avoid these I guess they're coconuts right but they also kind of look like bowling balls those are well <laughs> bowling balls are coconuts they're they're big <laughs> and you don't want to get hit by them for me you should die. Um, this part's a little tricky. Not this part, jumping on this guy's head, that's easy. Uh, but I'm actually gonna intentionally drop down here so we can take out this scorpion real quick. Try and just bounce on him rather than tail swiping him. Safer, in my opinion. Uh, but we have this kind of, like, little puzzle here. Um, uh, with, uh, this, uh, dynamic that, uh, I was just about to talk about, and then I forgot about it. Uh, yeah, these ABC blocks, which are triggered by these, um... I don't know, these bell target things. Technically, they give you three because you can use three of them um, to make, like, a direct staircase back to, like, where that, um... I don't know what it's called, but, like, that kind of, like, frog-headed thing where, I, where you just jump on it and it gives you collectibles. Um, but I prefer to just do the one and jump back on the platform, like you just saw. And, uh, I actually did pretty good on that, uh that platforming uh, thing over there. There's one collectible to get there, totally not worth it to me. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, that, that can be really tricky, especially with like those disappearing platforms, they can be a little bit tricky. Uh, let's see, and so here, I think there's health up here and I really want health. Or is it just an extra life? Okay, great. Sweet. All right, um, and there's a lot more. Uh, Piranhas down here. There's a lot more piranhas, so we can grab some of those. <laughs> I say as I don't see any piranhas. Right. Just two again? Come here, you. I, uh... And that's another weird sort of thing. I, I think the piranhas in the first level 
They don't have set paths, like cycling paths. They follow you, but these ones have cycling paths, which is weird. I don't know. It's weird. I don't know just how, how different this uh, tune level is from the uh, first one in some respects. More are these blocks? Nothing too tricky. Uh, here we have a nice combination of hard head areas, so stuff will drop on you, plus you have to time it with that uh, block. Speaking of timing, here's another one. Let's see if I can not mess this up. Uh, oop, uh, and I made it. Okay, great. Uh, we'll see more of that, uh, ship trapped in jello <laughs> in a little bit. Ooh, I don't know if going across this is worth it. Well, it's a tiny little area, so. Oh, oh, man, I was so happy because I missed the first one and they got me with the second one anyway. Oh, well. Guess I'm no worse a position than where I started. Or before I went over there, anyway. I'm gonna mess with the camera here just so I can get a good angle on this. Alright. And now we have a uh, repeat of some platforming that we've seen. At least in uh, the space-themed level, we had something like this, kind of. It's all about finding a nice rhythm. And, um, I think it's easier to, to actually go like this, to kind of snake your way through, uh, and, uh, jump onto the tops of them, as opposed to jumping from the middle. Although you can, it, uh, it's harder for me anyway. Plus, we're going for the collectibles, so why not, right? Out and it hurts. Oh, great, more hard hat areas. Yeah, I should probably spring through those, because Gex springs a little bit faster than, uh, than he, than he runs. You can zigzag a little easier, I think. Alright. How many more do we need? Oh, we're, yeah, we're doing fine. Here's the pool with a ton of these little piranha dudes. Robo-ranas. Ro Robo-piranas. Although, if they're robotic, I don't know what they're doing in the water. Well, I mean, I guess if they're... <laughs> I guess if they're well designed enough, I guess they can. Uh, we have robots that can be in the water. What am I saying? There we go. Surprised I made that without uh, using my spring jump. That's usually what I do on spinning platforms. Uh, this is a, maybe a little disorienting. Let's see if I can make it. Nope. Because if you get pinched in between, I mean, the nice thing is that you don't uh, lose health or anything like that, but. Uh, Timing is of the utmost importance there. And here we have sort of a really Wonka-ish door to nowhere. Or the Joker, if <laughs> judging by the ha-has. Alright, we get a little costume change. And so now we're <laughs> uh, a duck. Not Donald Duck. Wait, Daffy Duck. Donald Duck is Disney. Although it is interesting, I think, that in the first in the first tune level we were dressed as a rabbit, and now we're uh a duck going back to that class and they even reference it on a sign back there I probably should have pointed it out but one of the classic Looney Tune uh, episodes ever the it's duck season it's wabbit season oh my gosh that's like that that's great I love that uh, back and forth between bugs and uh, and Daffy Duck not Donald Duck and just like that we've got our reward remote not too much effort. Uh, we're gonna turn into lumberjacks here for a second. No, not really, but uh, the spinning log puzzle. Not puzzle, platform. Um, and uh, contrary to what you might want to do, never jump on that. Once you jump, you... I don't know, it's a lot harder. Maybe other people find jumping easier there, but I find it easier to just kind of move in a diagonal direction uh, and don't jump, because when you jump, the log moves out from under you, and it's uh, it's, it's a whole big thing. Uh, these are tricky little platforms, too, especially with the camera being wonky. Use the tail jump if you want. Sorry, I'm really trying to focus here, because these are the stupid mistakes that I make that end up in my death. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, just like that. Hoo-ha is right. Just like that, we got, uh, our first red remote for the level. Definitely the, uh, the less fun of the two. I like getting the second remote in this level. 
he gets to interact with the environment a lot, which I'm always up for. Uh, we'll just resume, we don't need to save. Oh, sweet, okay. <laughs> I was kind of wondering what we were gonna do in this video, I was like, oh Let's man. I can definitely finish Toon TV, but then do I go do a whole nother level? I don't know if I have enough time for that, but a bonus level will be perfect. Okay, so yeah, this is, I was pointing out, we need to go here. Look, I just Later. went to the gift shop and the bathroom. Not super appropriate to the level, I guess, but, uh, eh, whatever. Uh, but we can move real fast through here now because we don't need to worry about getting the collectibles, and so I'm gonna, like, speed run through this. Or, as well as I can speed run, I'm real. I think I mentioned this in another video, I am not much of a speed runner because when I speed run, or even attempt to, I get... I make stupid mistakes like that and get hurt. But I guess the, uh, the, uh, what's the word? The secret or the trick to doing a good speed run is that you, uh, uh, you learn all the little tricks. It takes a lot of practice, I guess. And, uh, so it's gonna sound bad if I say I don't practice much, but, uh, I don't like to overthink video games. Well, but then I do, I guess, because I like to go for 100% completion. I don't know what my problem is. I don't know. I just don't have the... Don't have what it takes for speedruns. Uh, oh, I, I'm really surprised I made that jump. <laughs> Let's definitely use the checkpoint. Press that. All right. And actually, I'm doing pretty... I'm moving pretty swiftly here. I'm surprising myself. Oh! And just like that, I jinxed myself and fell in the water. Come on, stupid camera. Ah. I'm trying to get it. There we go. Oh, come on, man. See, pride cometh before the fall. Pun definitely intended. There we go. Sweet. They call him flipper, flipper. Well, I guess those are kind of like flippers. I don't know if that's what that, uh... I mean, I know what flipper the... The dolphin is the TV show, but... So you can do it like that if you want, but then... You have to run back and forth anyway, so... I'd rather just... Find that nice steady rhythm and just, uh... Go back and forth like that. And... Check to that. Turn the camera so I don't... Instant Piranha. death here, because it is instant Piranha. death if you fall. All right, and uh, I almost hit this last time. I guess I could have, and it wouldn't have been a big deal, but we use that little flipper, and it gives us the clue, I suppose, um, that that also uh, frees the... Whoa, that was weird. It frees the boat from its jelly prison. <laughs> and uh, now we can hop on it. And we get a fun little animation here. Whee! Oh, no, we're going to crash! Oh, good, the Renaissance Fair. Uh, apparently not. Time to meet some fat chicks. <laughs> I love the Renaissance yeah, Fair. There's a really good Renaissance Fair here yeah. in, uh, well, it's not in Chicago. It's actually just across the border uh, into Wisconsin, the Bristol Renaissance Fair. Man, I love going to the Renaissance Fair. Probably one of the nerdiest things about me. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, here's the hidden remote. Pretty, pretty easy to get to, I guess, once you know how to do it. You just gotta, you can go either way around the castle, just stick to the side. And the nice thing is that they don't make you double back around it. There's, there's a hidden wall, but it's only a one-way wall. You have to be from the outside, that kind of thing. Some Harry Potter magic right there. Um, this can get a little confusing, maybe, if you don't take the hint. Uh, but basically, you do have to eat the firefly, light the rocket, and then Gex gets to ride it. Which is pretty sweet, huh? See, that's why I like this level. Wow, I just totally saw the limitations of the PlayStation. <laughs> Did you see the limits on those graphics? Man, that was way too much for the system to handle. <laughs> uh, kind of uh, blocky there, but that's okay. But yeah, that's fun. I like uh, I like lighting the rocket and then uh, setting off. Okay, um, I was going to save, but uh, this is just a bonus level. On bonus level, we should be able to complete rather quickly. I mean, it's not like we have a choice. We usually get... It's timed. It's usually, uh... What is it, about three minutes? It is three minutes. 99? What? 99? Yeah, it sounds really daunting, but it's really... 
uh, very easy. There's just a ton of them just right in front of you. And uh, again, this is actually another very linear um, bonus level. It also has a very interesting design aesthetic. It's like this crazy industrial 90s grunge music video look to it. That's what I think of. Especially with the music. It's pretty cool. Uh, I like it. Um, I think we see one more level like this at the very end of the game. Um, but I actually have not gotten to the end of the game of this game in a long time. Actually, one of uh, one of my viewers was uh, uh, reminiscing in a comment about um, the epic boss battle uh, music. Not so much the final boss battle when we fight Rez, but just the music. And I was like, oh man, I actually don't even remember what it sounds like. I actually don't even remember what it's like to fight Rez. Um, you know, just certain certain parts of the game. Uh, stuck with me and other parts didn't. I mean, I'm sure it's a great boss fight, I just don't quite remember it. But I, I feel like that's actually pretty, uh, pretty, um, normal, I guess. Yeah, I guess normal. Uh, I always tend to remember the beginnings of video games more than I remember the endings. I don't know if that's true for anybody else, but something about how a game gets set up is usually more memorable to, memorable to me than the ending. Which maybe sounds counterintuitive. I don't know. Anybody else feel that that sort of same way? I usually like starting video games, um, and it's uh, to be quite honest, even the best video games, uh, I tend to like the beginning more than I like the end. And it has nothing to do with like I don't want the game to end. I just I don't know. I don't know. One game that's definitely like that. Oh, let me just time this jump. It's pretty simple, but camera angles and me, not friends. Um, one game that's like that for me, and this might sound a little bit blasphemous, I don't know, is Final Fantasy VII. Um, I love the first... I mean, I like the whole game. Don't get me wrong. It's an amazing game. It lives up to its hype. Uh, let's go ahead and save and actually use the alternate save file here, just to make sure I don't lose progress. Um, but yeah, like the first... I feel like I feel like Final Fantasy VII is really great up until the point where Ares gets killed. And then I'm kind of like, eh, I guess I'll beat the game. I don't know. That, that's just me, and I feel like that way about a lot of other games. None that I can necessarily think of off the top of my head, of course, but um, I don't know. I always just like the start. So uh, if you feel the same way, please let me know. I would like to know that I'm not alone on that. Mecha Res. Mecha Res. Uh, so that's the one way that we can't go, uh, but let's go ahead and, uh, jump over here to, uh, our, uh, next, um, area of the game, and there is Gagzilla vs. Mecha Res. We can't get to it just yet because we have 20 instead of 21 red remotes, but it's a boss level. I'll save that for the end anyway because we have the, uh, regular levels, uh, lined up very nicely here, um, for, uh, next time. So yeah, of course, that's what we'll do next time. Uh, two of my least favorite designs, the Circuit Central and the Prehistory Channel, but we get another Scream TV, so I'm down with that. Um, I don't know which one I'll take on next time. Maybe I'll go right to left. I don't know. Um, but that's enough for now. So, as always, thanks for watching. Please like, please subscribe, please comment, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.